It's been described as a relationship of convenience, but one that may soon be nearing an end. On the surface, Turkey and Russia have few things in common when it comes to the war in Syria. For years, the two have engaged in a delicate dance, supporting opposing sides in the conflict while making sure it didn't boil over. But the humanitarian crisis in Syria's northwest province of Idlib is straining Turkish-Russian relations to breaking point. Ankara has long warned it would not allow Bashar al-Assad's aggression to go unchecked, be it against Turkish troops or Syrian civilians. But those warnings have fallen on deaf ears in Moscow. Assad continues to violate almost every agreement forged between Turkey and Russia. A series of recent phone calls between Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin has done little to ease the mistrust. So how deep is this fracture between two of the most important players in the Syrian conflict? And how will it play out on the ground? To discuss that, I'm joined by Hadi al Bahra. He is the co-chair of the Constitutional Committee from the Syrian opposition. And Talib Küçükcan, a senior fellow at TRT World Research Center. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you here. Hadi, President Erdogan vowed to kick off an operation unless the regime forces withdrew uh, from the Turkish uh, posts by the end of February. So is Turkey edging towards a direct confrontation with Russian-backed Syrian forces. What, is your, what do you make of it? I think President Erdogan has uh, played the role of a wise leader. He did not go to the edges. He showed uh, that he's capable to defend the national interests of Turkey. He prepared for the war. He put the needed forces on the ground for it, but also he did not go full-blown war. He gave time to talks, to negotiation, so this time uh, frame is open for the Russian to act as a wise leader also and to open a window for peaceful talks and to reach an agreement. Mm. Because at the current situation, Turkey has reached the bare bone point of no return. Russia has stepped on the edges of the national security of Turkey and also for Syrians as our last resort of the opposition. Yes. Because everybody in the world has witnessed how all Syrians were pushed to move towards Idlib, and now they are being slaughtered on a daily basis in that region. So actually, President Erdogan played it wisely. He opened the window for peace. He's prepared for war. He's ready to win that war if he goes. But he's very wise also not to have reached a conflict with the Russian, he, the message is it's clear. If there keeping. is a war, it should be between Turkey and the regime, not between Turkey and Russia. They are now accusing each other, actually. And on the other hand, one country that has been closely watching all of these developments was the United States, as discrepancies over it reached a breaking point after a killing of 13 Turkish soldiers. Russia and the U.S. engaged in a, a social media spat. The U.S. Embassy in Ankara posted a video on its Twitter account with the caption, Eyes on Idlib, landing full support to NATO ally Turkey. But Russia responded in what looks like an attempt to drive a wedge between Turkey and the U.S. Its embassy in Ankara posted an infographic about Trump's budget proposal for the terror organization YPG, saying the decision is yours. So where does this leave Turkey, uh, Talib, and where does the U.S. draw its line of support to Turkey militarily, let's well, say. Well, I think when you look at the uh, U.S. behavior in Syria, uh, there is a lot of difference between Turkey and uh, U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. as far as uh, U.S. Uh, support to PYD and YPG. This is the main, I think, uh, divergence between the two countries. Now, what we see that when Russia becomes much more powerful in, that, in the region, it seems that the uh, U.S. Uh, seems to be uh, waking up, actually, but that's too late. And is the US, it, is it, it seems to be so because the U.S. will not really uh, commit its soldiers on the ground mm -hmm. or any military, uh, let's say, presence in the region. Uh, in that calculation, when you look at the power balance, then again, Russia will be, uh, I think, uh, more um, influential as far as the regime and the region is concerned. And, of course, Turkey expects um, assistance diplomatically and militarily from its allies, uh, basically from NATO and from U.S., but it seems that the 
when, you, when you look at the statements by the, by the leaders in the West, including US, it's more on the rhetorical and discursive level so far. Uh, as long as so we don't see any presence. So you're not hopeful that uh, these leaders, as well as European leaders, would someday step in and shoulder Turkey's burden? Well, until now, I think Turkey was left on its own, mm -hmm. on the national security issues and also on the refugee issues that maybe we will touch on in the Idlib case. So Please far, do. Turkey uh, has been left on its own, uh, and it seems that uh, the Europe uh, and the US and the NATO will not rush to Turkey's mm -hmm. uh, help. Uh, Hadi, as I've just mentioned, why Idlib matters so much, both for Turkey and for Syrian opposition? For Syrian opposition, it is the last resort of all the Syrian people. Idlib, it's not about Idlib. Idlib, it became as little Syria. It has people from Homs, from Damascus, from Dara, from all over Syria. You are talking about a small slot of land where around 4 million people living right now and they seek refuge there under the eye witness of the UN and the international community. So protection of these people is, uh, has to be provided by the international community and the only country right now can provide this protection is Turkey. Plus also for on the political front and for the negotiation to push for a political resolution, we need also to keep Idlib quiet, to have a ceasefire in, that, uh, in this area and to open the door for the political mm. talks. For Turkey, it represents the Turkish weight in any political resolution coming in Syria in the future. Yeah. So also Turkey cannot also let down Idlib because it's essential part for its own national interest and security. And national security. I was going to ask you that. I mean, what happens if Idlib falls? I mean, uh, this would, of course, endanger Turkey's national security, wouldn't it? Well, I think, as Hadi said, if Idlib falls, that means Syria will fall at the hands of the regime almost 100%. So it is going to be no return. And of course, when you look at the population, people who are living in Idlib, uh, we are talking about three, four million people. And already, I think, uh, a million people are now moving towards the uh, Turkish borders. Mm -hmm. This is a, uh, one of the greatest, I think, humanitarian disasters of the 21st century, maybe the yeah, first and the, biggest the one Yeah, the United Nations called it right. a horror uh, And of course, this uh, will have uh, a lot of repercussions and implications for Turkey's national security and also its you know, economic well-being as well. I mean, Turkey already hosts 3.6 million people spending more than $40 billion. Uh, this is uh, not a small amount. Uh, and also, sociologically speaking, we have some cities where 20-25% of the population is already Syrian. So there's a demographic shift in the region as well. I think uh, when we look at all these uh, you know, variables, uh, uh, there is a, uh, a gloomy picture uh, in Idlib, and yeah. if Idlib falls down, that means uh, uh, it is not going to be in Idlib, but um, the influence will be the regional countries, yeah. and even beyond that, I mean, the, the, the European Union and all European countries will face again another maybe wave of uh, immigrants the and immigrants, refugees. Which like they that dread, in, like unfortunately. In yeah. Uh, yeah, Hadi, give us a, a Russian position. Does Putin want to be the only power to call um, the shots in Syria's future, or... Is there a possibility that he could compromise, whereby Turkey can have a say over the future of Syria? I think uh, President Putin should, at the end, come to his, uh, you senses. know, uh, senses to come to a compromise and to take the Syrian people' demands for political transition and also to take the Turkish uh, national security. Uh, into his point of view and to open the door for a settlement through negotiation. But also let me uh, be clear that Turkey now is being uh, threatened by using people, by using the refugees' uh, waves uh, towards Turkey because all these people, they will not go to the regime area. No. All these people, they, were, they are already in the border area. We are talking about 1,100,000 refugees now. I know more than a million ready now packed to move out of their cities if the military operation continues. Mm. So in that way, the regime and the Russian, they are using the refugees as a weapon against Turkey, Turkey. and against and Europe civilians. also. Yeah. So you, it's time for Europe also to wake up because this is a direct threat to their own national security. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see about that. Gentlemen, I'm afraid we're out of time. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk. Thank you.